I'm going to be responding to Maria's work with the Lady and Disadvantage claims, and she said that animal testing is easier and less costly. It is. Or it's not easier, but it could be less costly, but over time it's going to end up adding as more since 92% of it does not like have any effect. Like They show advances in animals when tested and when put into humans, nothing happens, or they're completely dangerous. So that's going to add up in a lot of money if you just keep testing and get 92% of it to not have results. And she said that animal testing is our only alternative to testing on humans. But right now we have experiments that can, uh, progressive scientists have used human brain cells to develop a model microbrain, which can be used to study tumors as well as artificial skin and bone marrow. We can now test irritancy on protein membranes and produce and test vaccines using human tissue and perform pregnancy tests using blood samples instead of killing rabbits. And I think that was a major advance from animal testing is that if you didn't know, in old pregnancy tests, every time they wanted a result from a pregnancy test, they had to kill one rabbit because the rabbit had the um, enzyme that activated the positive or negative on the pregnancy test. And um, Maria also compared that human lives are greater to animal lives, but for Botox, one person kills half of the bat like half of a batch of animals, and usually 100 mice are used per batch, so killing 50 mice just to get like a couple wrinkles smoothed out of your face, I don't really see how more about, like that's very moral to like kill 50 people just to get a couple of wrinkles smoothed out on your face. And um, Maria also said that medical advances will not be found unless we use animal testing, but there are programs like the Trauma Man system, it's an anatomical human body form designed for students to practice on. And they can use it instead of animals. And instead of testing on animals every single time they want to test something, they can use that system to like create an in-depth theory on how they're going to test the animal and then only use one animal instead, instead of like using a brand new animal every time they want to test. And um, Maria also said, biological and medical fields have nothing to work with. And um, first of all, most of the animals used in schools are from the slaughterhouses that the like, slaughterhouses provide fetal pigs, and for a farm to sell like skinned meat, foxes, and rabbits to test on. So those animals were already like put through pain before they even got to that. So then they're going through it like they're already dead, but they're still like they shouldn't have their body cut up for science because there's already like a whole bunch of like 3D modeling and um, they have the they have Episkin and Corocitex which can simulate the skin in animals if they really need to test with that. Biological and medical fields can, should be able to use animals for testing, but after the animal died naturally, if the animal was killed for um, like its fur, I don't really feel like that's a, the, the just thing to do, because if the animal was tortured, then why should we like, make or like degrade it more? And teachers and professors recognize that most students can learn equally well as well and often better through the use of technology. Because um, there's an important lesson taught when not using real animals. Students learn to respect living beings and begin to appreciate and understand the role of animals in nature. This is fundamental to biology, the study of life. And that was from AABS.org, and it's, um, most teachers and professors find that animal testing is more, or animal testing is bad because teachers learn to respect life more, or students learn to respect life more as a result of like doing a 3D model instead of a actual 